A surge in migrants puts a new spotlight on how to humanely house unaccompanied minors crossing into Texas. We can be able to make, be safe, make sure that our community is safe, make sure that anybody entering to the center is safe. How the state has responded to concerns about child trafficking as the surge has an impact beyond the border. The state's top utility regulator steps down after a taped phone call gets out. Why it's raising questions about who made money from the winter storm power crisis. A young girl's death brings a push for change at the Capitol. Something's got to come out of this that's good because Betty was just, she was such a pure heart and so good. How new legislation could affect what you know about treatment at urgent care facilities. Hello and thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle. We're coming to you this week from the state capitol and we'll look at several big stories developing here, but we start with a situation unfolding in South Texas. Thousands of unaccompanied migrant children and teens have crossed the border in the past few weeks, straining the system. The impact is reaching beyond the border. Buses carried hundreds of migrant teen boys early Thursday to a convention center in Dallas. The site will temporarily host up to 3,000 unaccompanied boys for up to 90 days. Other cities in the state will also host children. Politics reporter John Engel shows us why Governor Greg Abbott says Texas law enforcement agents need access to those children. The state of Texas will always step up and fill in the gaps that are left open by Washington. Governor Greg Abbott says the Biden administration must give Texas law enforcement agents access to the unaccompanied children who will soon arrive in Dallas. The Department of Public Safety now expanding the scope of Operation Lone Star to include human trafficking. Because they've been threatened by the cartels. When the cartel says, if you talk, we're going to go kill your families, they actually mean that. Abbott noted that in his first legislative session as governor, lawmakers approved nearly a billion dollars for border security. But a KXAN investigation found that a DPS surge to the border from 2014 to 2016 led to mostly low-level arrests. Only 6% were felony drug charges, 1% were human trafficking. Austin Congressman Michael McCall says the Biden administration's day one end to a policy that kept asylum seekers in their home countries is playing a big part in the surge. So this policy has actually ironically encouraged separation of families by allowing the traffickers to take these children and exploit them and make money off them and then dump them across the, you know, the river into the United States. But experts say there's more to the story. I would put a lot of the blame on the prior administration dismantling um, systems and so therefore making it very difficult um, to get up to speed as quickly as necessary. But the Biden administration absolutely needs to take very important steps very quickly. For State of Texas, I'm John Engel. Our partners at BorderReport.com have been following what's happening at the border closely. We're joined now by BorderReport.com, Sandra Sanchez. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Josh. We've seen previous waves of immigration at the border. What makes this one different? Right, 2014, 2015, 2019, we have seen a lot of family units crossing the Rio Grande into South Texas. I live in McAllen, where all of this is happening, as well as unaccompanied migrant children. What, what's different this time is the coronavirus pandemic that's happening as well as a confluence of events with a new law that took effect in Mexico at the same time that the Biden administration came into office. And this new law said that no young migrant children can be chained in Mexican facilities. So Mexican federal officials, after Joe Biden took office, let federal officials know on the U.S. side, we're not going to take back small children. The cartels have long crossed these uh, family units, these UACs, as they're called, the unaccompanied children, in this part. Now they see that area as, a, as an easy place to actually cross them, and they're continuing to cross them there. And there has been a lot of concern about people who are coming across the border, possibly uh, bringing COVID with them. Uh, how's that being addressed? Yeah, it's not too well. As you know, Customs and Border Protection cannot test everyone. They have told us repeatedly they don't have the resources. They only test those who show some symptoms and they'll refer them to medical professionals for further evaluation, for further testing. So it's incumbent upon the local cities, the NGOs to jump in there and, and help with this. Um, it's not gone too well. We were one of the first media outlets to report that 108 people in Brownsville tested positive for COVID. And then the mayor said, we don't know what happened. We know that two families did quarantine, but only for two nights. So the perception is that 
they tested positive at the bus station. They could have possibly gotten on buses. This prompted the CEO of Greyhound to send Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas a letter saying we want proof that everyone's negative for COVID before they get on our buses. Um, so different cities are trying different things. In the city of McAllen, uh, they are partnering with Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley. Sister Norma Pimentel, who runs that agency, uh, explains what they're doing. That added, uh, added responsibility to us, making sure that when they release, we make sure that they don't have COVID. We test them. We can be able to make be safe, make sure that our community is safe, make sure that anybody entering to the center is safe. Nobody that enters the bus station or goes to the airport has COVID. That's a big thing for us. And so it does take an effort from our part, uh, added responsibility to make sure that that happens, to make sure that they are sent to a hotel where they keep, are kept in, in isolation. We have to care for them, make sure they're fed, and make sure we test them every day until they test negative. So all that is extra that we didn't have before. Last week, Senator John Cornyn and Congressman Henry Cuellar went to Laredo to help address this problem. They had a roundtable with local leaders there to try to give them ideas on how they can also do similar testing at facilities. And this Friday, Senator Cornyn's returning to the Rio Grande Valley, this time with Senator Cruz, and they're going to meet with officials in the Rio Grande Valley in, in the McAllen area to talk more about how they can uh, make this testing more successful. And we know that Governor Abbott has put the blame for the influx of migrants on the Biden administration. Here's what he had to say. Texas is willing to step up and help out, but this is the Biden's administration responsibility. In part, immigration is always a federal responsibility. In, in part, it's the policies that have been adopted by the Biden administration that have uh, escalated the number of children coming across the border where the Biden administration has made it clear that if you are an unaccompanied child, you will be allowed to come into the United States. What's been the reaction to that kind of criticism on the border? You know, it's always been the policy of the United States to accept unaccompanied migrant children. During the Trump administration, when these children came across, they were accepted. Um, so it's not actually a fair criticism. Um, this did happen in the Biden, it's happening in the Biden administration. It happened in the Trump administration. I used to visit the Matamoros refugee camp across the bridge from Brownsville, where after nearly two years of waiting, several families willingly sent their children across the gateway and International Bridge, you know, brothers and sisters holding hands because they knew if they just entered alone, they would be accepted. So FEMA officials are on the ground working elbow to elbow with officials with Health and Human Services at these CBP facilities like the Donna Tent facility where I've been all week um, from the outside of the grounds. And um, they're trying to sort these children. They're trying to determine if they have sponsors in the country, where they can send them to. They don't want to send them to these detention facilities because they are full. All right. Well, it's been great having you here in Austin at the Capitol uh, for a change. Uh, we are so used to seeing your great reporting on the border. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you can see that great reporting at borderreport.com. A Texas family calls for more transparency inside urgent care facilities, how it's leading to legislation they believe could have saved their daughter's life. That leaked tape from the chair was stunning. The state's top utility regulator forced out after a leaked recording. Why a phone call with investors is leading to bigger questions about the winter storm power crisis.